They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I'm going to show you how to make the best English muffins so you can either eat with butter and jam or make a delicious breakfast sandwich. Welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, click like and subscribe and as usual all the ingredients will be linked in the description box down below. I have some whole milk that's at 105 degrees, drop in some yeast, give this a stir, let that sit aside. I have some bread flour, diastatic malt powder and salt. Now since I started making pizza, I really enjoyed using diastatic malt powder in my dough recipes and I'm going to write more about that down below. I set my mixer on low and let this go for about four to five minutes until the dough pulls away from the bowl clean as you see here. Give this a quick knead. Now we're pretty much done. We're just going to put this into a bowl, cover it with plastic wrap and let this sit in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Let that do all the work. You're going to have some really nice, tasty English muffins. So this is the next day. Now with this recipe, it does take some planning. You know, if you want English muffins on Saturday, you need to make this the day before. Now the total weight of our dough is about 1,051 grams, which is perfect because we're looking for 87 gram dough balls, which will give us a dozen. Once you're finished weighing out all your dough balls, it's time to shape them into little bowls. Now tuck them into itself and roll it around on your bench creating a nice surface tension just like so. Make your hand to a cage and just roll it. As you can see here, the table is creating a nice surface tension. So you don't want any flour or oil on your bench. Continue shaping all your little dough balls until you're done. And then I'm using semolina flour to coat both sides. I have a sheet tray lined with Silpat. That's going to be my holding station where they will rise. You definitely can use parchment paper or foil, whatever is easiest for you. Now give them space to proof because they will double in size. For me, removing them straight from the fridge and working with them and my house is at 72 degrees, it took around two hours for them to proof and double in size just like so. But you need to periodically check on them to make sure that they don't overproof because if they do, they're gonna fall flat. Now I cook my English muffins completely on the griddle at about gas mark three. I like to do five minutes on each side to make sure that they cook all the way through. Now after the first flip, if your English muffin is darker than this, you need to turn your heat down because we need them to cook all the way through. And I'm pressing it down right now just to shape them a little bit more. I like, you see how it's coming down and you're getting a really nice puffy English muffin shape do that for all of them let this cook on the second side for another five minutes and give it a tap if it sounds dense it means it's not done yet we'll flip this over for about another five minutes cooked bread sounds hollow on the inside so when you give it a tap if it sounds nice and hollow then it's done it's very important to let your english muffins rest on a cooling rack that way it's still continuing to cook and eventually it will cool completely that is when you want to open your English muffin, but you need to use a fork just like so. That way you can preserve all the nooks and crannies. Some people like to eat them with butter and jam. Some people like to eat it plain. I love making breakfast sandwiches with them. Now I'm going to toast this so it's nice and brown. I'm going to add in a little bit of oil and egg. Let's break the yolk so it's more uniform. And I also like spicy pork breakfast sausage. You can use Canadian bacon, you can use ham, you can use whatever you want. This is your sandwich. I did squirt a little bit of water and dome my egg so that way it cooks on the other side just like so. Once I released it from the ring, I'm gonna give it a flip and we're ready to assemble the sandwich. This is my favorite combination for breakfast sandwich. I have some American cheese. I'm gonna add in the spicy pork breakfast sausage, the egg, and let's not forget to season a little bit of salt and black pepper. And I think that is all you need. Let's crown our breakfast sandwich and look at what we've created. Nice puffy English muffins. I threw some jam on some, but the star of the show is this guy. These have some nice height to them. Nice, beautiful coloration here. And this is better than anything you can buy at the store. You can't go wrong with classic English muffin with jam. Mm has really good flavor from the long ferment that we did. You can see like cross section of the bite here. It's got really nice chew to it. Mm. I love this sandwich. I just really love this sandwich. Mmm. 
Yes. Got a hollowed out egg right there, but still nice and hot. Just this English muffin is just tasty. Just really, really tasty. As you saw, there wasn't a lot of labor involved. Maybe like 10 minutes of um, getting your ingredients, mixing it. Overnight, you know, the refrigerator does all the work, 24 hour cold ferment. And I've done English muffins before where I had to roll out the dough and then stamp them out. I just think that you don't get as much fluff or rise from using that way. Cause you know, you're rolling out the English muffin. So you're already like getting rid of some gas you know, I, I just, I'm not a fan of that. Also, if you do it this way, there's no wastage. You know, you don't have all the edges or the frames of the cut out or the stamped out English muffin doughs. I mean, you're going straight into whatever the weight is. And these are 87 grams, 87, 88 grams, you know, and then this is a perfect size English muffin. This recipe gave me 12, 87, 88 gram dough balls or perfect English muffin size. All right guys, so that was my English muffin recipe. Give this a try. You're definitely gonna love it. And again, if you're new to this channel, go ahead, click the like button down below, subscribe and follow me for more recipes. Happy New Year and thank you for your continued love and support. I really appreciate that. And let's make 2023 a big year. All right guys. Take care of yourselves, and as always, peace.